here we have two bytes that I'm going to subtract. Let's look at the first column, 0 minus 0. Well, that's clearly going to be a 0. If we look at the next column, which is this one here, then that's going to be 1 minus 1, which is 0. If we go to this column, well, this is 1 minus 0, which is obviously going to be 1. Let's now consider this column. From the 0, we're taking 1. Now, in these circumstances, we always say we borrow 1 from this column. When we say we borrow 1, what we're really saying is this is the value of 2. Now, the reason for that is this column is twice this column. And, of course, we can see I've made that 1 a 0. Now, the reason for that is that if I'm borrowing 1 from this column, then clearly I have to reduce this by 1 because I've moved its value to this column here. Here, this 1 is being subtracted from 2 to give 1. Moving to the next column, we can see this 0 is subtracted from this 0 to give us 0. In the next column, we're subtracting 1 from 0, so we have to borrow 2 again. And you can see here I've wrote the little 2, because it's twice the previous column. And then you can see I've reduced this from 1 to 0. So when we go on to this column, we're actually subtracting the 1 from the 2, which gives us the 1. And of course here, we're subtracting the 0 from the 0 to give us 0. And then finally we come on to this column and 0 minus 0 is clearly 0. I'm going to look at how we can design a combinational logic circuit to perform these subtractions. And it's going to be called a half subtractor. That's going to have an input x, an input y, where x and y represent the individual bits being subtracted. And the output is going to be the difference between these individual bits. And of course, we've seen that we've been dealing with borrows, so we're going to have an output which is also a borrow. Now, we're going to consider the inputs to this half subtractor, and we can see that they're x and y. And what we're going to produce is a truth table. And what I'm writing down here are all the possible combinations we can have for x and y. And of course, we need to consider the outputs, which are going to be the difference and the borrow, which I'm going to write down as d for difference and b for borrow. If we consider the condition when x is 0 and y is 0, then the difference between them is 0. And of course, there was no need to do any borrowing there, so we put a 0 under the b. Now I'm going to come down to this one, because this is 1 minus 0, which obviously is a difference of 1, and we didn't have to borrow. Of course, if we now come here, where we have 1 minus 1, we're going to have a difference of 0, and of course, we didn't need to borrow. Now consider this combination of x and y. And of course, I'm taking from 0, 1, which means I need to borrow. And when I borrow, it's 2. And of course, when 1 is subtracted from 2, we have a difference of 1. This truth table is now used to produce the sum of min terms. So we look at when the output is a 1, which is here, and this becomes x and y. But of course, the x is a 0, which means we put a not above the x. This is a 1, so the output here, again we write down the x and the y, but of course if we look at the y it's a 0, so that tells us we put a not above the y. Consequently, the output d, the difference, is expressed as not x and y, or x and not y. Now previous videos should have shown you that when you see this Boolean expression, it is the exclusive or expression, so this can be written as x exclusively odd with y. If we now consider the borrow output, we can see there's a 1 here, and of course that's going to give us this particular value here, not x and y. So the borrow can be expressed as not x and y. Let's now write these Boolean expressions out again here. So we can see that the difference is going to be x exclusively odd with y. And we're going to look at the borrow. And it's actually called the borrow out in many textbooks. And what we're going to write here is x and y. And this is going to be knotted to reflect what we found from the truth table. Now we're going to produce the circuit for this, the logic circuit. And of course, to produce the difference, we're going to take x and y. And we're going to put that through an exclusive OR gate. So what we will have here is x exclusively odd with y. And of course, this is the difference output. Now, of course, we now need to produce the borrow out. So I'm going to take a tap off the x, and I'm going to put this through a NOT gate. Now, the reason for that is we need NOT x. And I'm going to take a tap off the y, and I'm going to take the NOT x and the y, and I'm going to produce 
a AND gate where the NOT X and the Y are the input to give us here NOT X and Y. And of course, that is the borrow. And what you're looking at here is the combinational logic circuit for a half subtractor. Of course, if we so wish, we could have actually gone with this Boolean expression here and we could have built up a logic circuit gate. Here you can see I've got NOT X and here's Y. I'm putting those through a two input AND gate and that will give me here NOT X AND Y. And I need another AND gate because what I now need to do is to take a tap off the X, put that into the input of this AND gate, take a tap off the Y, put this through a NOT gate and this will give me NOT Y. And of course I will now have here X and NOT Y. Those outputs now act as input to an OR gate and what we will have at the output of the OR gate is actually not X and Y or X and not Y. And of course we can now need another AND gate and on this occasion what I need here is not X and Y. Now take a tap off the not X, put this into this particular gate, I now take a tap off the Y, bring that down here, and of course we can look at this and realise that this is the borrow, and this here is actually the difference as expressed by this particular Boolean expression here. So you have a choice of gates here, and of course your more choices, you could implement the entire thing using NAND gates. But this is just a demonstration of how you produce a half subtractor. In this particular video I've used X and Y as the inputs and you'll have noted in previous videos in this playlist I've used A and B as the inputs. It doesn't really matter um, but the reason I used it here was not to get confused with the B for the borrow output but in many textbooks you will see this expressed with A and B instead of the X and Y and instead of the B as the output it will be B and a tiny writing of the word out next to the B, meaning it's B out, i.e. borrow out. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.